Whether it's a first date, a job interview, or just meeting a friend of a friend, first impressions are important. And depending on how much of a social butterfly you are, meeting someone for the first time can also be extremely nerve-wracking and stressful. But just how important are first impressions, really? After all, it's not like you can glean everything there is to know about a person just from your first encounter, right? After all, people are complex and multifaceted. A person, even so, first impressions can have a much larger impact than you might think, and today, we're going to unpack some of the potential reasons why. If you're new to Bestie, I hope this was a good enough first impression to make you subscribe and click the notification bell. That way, you can stay up to date on all of our daily videos and content. So what makes a first impression so important? While people are far too complex to be perfectly encapsulated into a single encounter, our brains may try to convince us otherwise. According to Psychology Today, human beings seem to be mentally hardwired to size each other up as quickly as possible. In fact, a person often makes up their mind about someone within the first seven seconds of meeting them. The reason for these snap judgments can stem from a number of different factors, but once they've been made, a first impression can be hard to move on from. Because of this, first impressions can be an important and in some cases, your only opportunity to really sell yourself to the person you're meeting. Which can be especially crucial in situations such as a job interview where leaving someone with a good first impression can make or break your chances at employment. That being said, there are ways you can ensure a better first impression when meeting someone for the first time. You can start putting these strategies into effect once you gain a better understanding of what goes into a first impression to start with. One weird little quirk in human psychology that has a strong impact on first impressions is an occurrence referred to as the halo effect. The halo effect occurs when our initial judgment of a person ends up unconsciously overshadowing our perception of that person as a whole, fairly or otherwise. The term gets its name because when meeting someone for the first time, a positive external quality of theirs may shine over that person like a halo, glowing brightly enough to blind us from new details or information about that person that we may learn as time goes on. This can obviously lead to some incredibly harmful effects, such as some people being subjected to unfair and biased treatment based on aspects they can't control, while others might be put on a pedestal with their strengths seemingly overshadowing their flaws. However, there are ways in which people have tried to work around the halo effect in order to be more fair and unbiased in their judgments. For example, in an academic setting, professors may choose to grade papers anonymously so that preconceived notions they might have about specific students doesn't have an adverse effect on their grades. You can also shake the halo effect simply by getting to know someone over a long period of time, such as in a long-term relationship. Eventually, the initial judgments of the halo effect will fade away as you begin to experience a more nuanced and realistic view of that person as new traits and information come to light. Of course, while true substance can eventually overcome a suboptimal first impression, most people often don't get the chance to make up their initial mistakes. This means that if you want someone to have a high opinion of you from the first meeting onward, you should pay attention to ways in which your behavior might be received by others, such as tone, posture, and body language. Additionally, now that you know this information, you should also be more mindful of ways in which your own personal prejudices might hold sway over the way you view others on a first impression. And try to break yourself of that knee-jerk, judgmental mindset and see people for who they really are beyond your first impression. Of course, breaking the psychology of first impressions is easier said than done. According to psychologist Leslie Zebrowitz from Brandeis University, the things that make or break first impressions can be as simple and subtle as someone's facial information. Even just seeing a photo of someone for the first time can be enough to create an impression which colors the thoughts and opinions you have of the person in question. Our criteria when it comes to making these judgments is also fairly consistent, meaning that these judgments are probably innate as opposed to a mindset that we learned over time. According to some research, children and even infants also display tendencies to judge others based on their faces, which shows us that this behavior can potentially start incredibly early in our lives. There are a variety of different facial cues and traits that Zebrowitz has come to identify as being common factors in solidifying a person's first impression. For example, a person who has a baby face, like 
large eyes, a rounded head, or other facial characteristics associated with babies might be seen as friendly but not necessarily as capable or competent because of the subconscious mental association others might have between that person and a literal infant. In other cases, if we see people who bear facial similarities to people we already know, such as close friends and family members, chances are we'll probably make assumptions about them based on what we know about the person we think they resemble. If you see a man who looks like your curmudgeonly great uncle, you're probably gonna make a mental assumption that this person is a grouch as well, even if it turns out to not be the case. And of course, if someone looks healthy and conventionally attractive, we'll probably be more inclined to like them and give them preferential treatment over others. Finally, we also make assumptions about people based on the emotional expressions that their faces seem to best exemplify. For example, some people's natural resting faces might naturally look mean, even in times when the person in question is currently in a neutral or even a good mood. There's a reason your parents told you not to judge a book by its cover after all. As you can see, there are a number of potential factors that go into a first impression, some of which we have direct control over and many more we don't. Is this a fair way to assess another person when meeting them for the first time? Well, the short answer is no, but unfortunately, the fact of the matter seems to be that we as a species have a natural disposition to making quick judgments about people and holding on to those judgments for a long time afterwards. At the very least, you can hopefully take what you've learned in this video to heart. The next time you judge someone poorly based on a first impression, ask yourself, am I judging this person based on something that they have control over? If not, then train yourself to keep a more open mind moving forward. Did you enjoy this video? What qualities do you find yourself paying attention to when meeting someone for the first time? Share your stories and experiences in the comment section below and help us keep the conversation going. And as always, feel free to share this video with anyone you think might find it interesting. Enjoyed this video? Hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.